Oh, hello, and welcome to the channel. Today I will be giving you a number of helpful tips and useful info to use during your first playthrough of Potion Permit, a cozy slice of life sim in which you try to convince a small town to let you heal their infirm by injecting them with bits of bugs, rocks, and tree sap. Yeah, I'd be suspicious too, Mateo. Now, let's get started. I'd like to start by pointing out that this isn't Stardew Valley, and it's not Animal Crossing. It's a true cozy game. There's no calendar, there's no seasons, there's no in-game stat that tracks the number of days that have gone by. You don't need to learn to cram as much into a day as possible or maximize your daily efficiency. There's no need to memorize crop rotation cycles or any crap like that. The game cycles Monday through Sunday on loop, at infinitum, with no missable events or time-locked events. There's no friendship decay, nothing. There's no rush at all in this game. So just do what you want to do, use your energy if you feel like it, and then go to sleep and start again the next day. The only time-sensitive event in the game is treating your patients, as you have four days to diagnose and treat any villager who appears in your clinic. But don't stress about this, because the penalty for failing to treat them is extremely minor. You don't lose any friendship or anything like that. The sick villager will just leave town for two days, and you will temporarily lose trust with the town, which means you can't talk to people or use any shops. But no matter how many patients you let suffer, the next time you treat any single patient, all is forgiven and you're back in good graces with the town. If you want to treat more patients immediately, or generally just advance time for any reason at all, don't be afraid to just go to sleep whenever. There's literally no reason not to, and it is a useful tool to let you do the things you'd like to do in the game. Friendship is essentially mandatory, so play another game if you're looking to roleplay a hermit. Upgrades for your clinic, house, town, and most importantly your tools are all locked behind friendship milestones with various villagers. The first time you meet a villager, they will introduce themselves, and you can immediately talk to them again to start befriending them. You can only talk to them once a day to advance your friendship, so make sure you talk to everyone you meet daily. Once you fill up their friendship meter, the next day you can visit a bulletin board around town to find the location of an event or quest that will unlock higher friendship with them. You receive gift bags, known as moon cloves, each time you treat a patient, and you can get more by completing other various tasks and quests around town. These are universally loved by everyone in town, including the cat for some reason, and will increase your friendship significantly. It's a good idea to save your moon cloves for villagers you don't see very often, like Mateo, who lives in the middle of nowhere and never visits town. Be sure to pet and feed your dog every day, not only because he's just the best boy, yes you are, but also because it'll increase your friendship with him. As your friendship grows, he'll begin to find items while you're out on the range. Once you meet a villager at least once, your dog will be able to find them for you. No need to memorize a thousand different villager schedules, just have your dog sniff them out for you. If your dog is shaking and sad, it means he's hungry and won't perform tasks. So give him some food and keep him happy and helping. You can buy eggs in bulk from the farmhouse, and these make for amazing and cheap dog food. Save the steak for yourself. One of the best foods in the game is the glazed corn from Otmar's shop. He's open for business Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday afternoons. The corn is only 15 gold and gives you a sizable amount of health and energy. No need to mess around in the kitchen, just stock up before you head out to the range. If you run low on health or energy, but you still have a lot you want to get done that day, you can spend two in-game hours in the bathhouse to completely refill your health and energy. Using the bathhouse is completely free. You can furnish your house by buying furniture at the carpenter shop. You don't get furniture anywhere else in the game, which is why I'm still living like a peasant at the end of this game. You can upgrade your house at the carpenter shop to give yourself more room for furniture. When out on the range, be sure to collect everything you see. Every plant, rock, tree, or monster all drop a unique resource that can be used in potion making. Most villager quests also require a various amount of all of these resources, so it's good to have extras on hand. You can also turn surplus materials into extra potions to sell, which will become one of the best ways to make gold later on in the game. Once you make a potion five times, you can press the indicated hotkey to save it as a recipe. You can then press that hotkey on the potion select screen to craft the potion in bulk using that recipe. You can save three different recipes for any given potion, and can choose to rewrite an old recipe after that. There is no dedicated weapon in this game, you simply use your tools for combat. All tools can be used for combat, and don't affect what the monster drops. But when in doubt, use the axe, as it is the most powerful by a small margin. Every time you hit something with a tool, you use a little bit of your energy. 
You don't actually use any energy if you don't make any contact. You can conserve your energy by attacking monsters while you gather your resources at the same time. Strike a monster once and you'll lure them over to a nearby resource. Then you can simply harvest them both at once. If you're not in bed by 2 a.m., you pass out on the spot and will wake up at home at noon the next day. But fear not, because there's literally no other consequences. No one rifles through your pockets to steal your loose change or items or any of the resources you've gathered. You only lose a little bit of time the next day. You don't need to approach a flag to initiate fast travel. It can be done from any outdoor location. Just open your map and select a flag to instantly move to that spot. There's a flag just inside each new zone you unlock, so don't forget to activate it before you go. Each new zone of the map drops substantially more wood and stone than the previous one, so there's really no need to spend a ton of time in the early zones hoarding wood and stone. There are a lot of upgrades in this game, and they can get very expensive very quickly. Fortunately, almost all of the upgrades are optional. The main upgrades to focus on are your tools. Always max them out as high as they can go as soon as you possibly can. This will allow you to gather more resources faster for anything else you might want to buy. Potions begin to get more complex as you progress through the game. If you find yourself looking at a seemingly impossible potion, you'll need to upgrade your cauldron at the blacksmith shop. You can easily make all the potions in the game with only the first two of the five total cauldron upgrades available. If you're struggling in combat and your tools are already as high as they can go, you can increase your survivability by buying health upgrades at the blacksmith shop. This is the only combat upgrade that's available in the game. Alright, so there you have it. I hope these tips help you make the most of your time in Moonberry. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and subscribe for more content. Do you have any helpful tips of your own? Leave a comment to let us know. And until next time, happy gaming!